Hello everybody, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I'm going to do a quick, tiny painting from a photograph. My friend commissioned one today. She was just like, Andrew, Lindsay's in town, and I need to, uh, you know, her birthday's tomorrow. And, um, you know, can you, do you have time to do a tiny painting for her? Because Brooke really likes tiny paintings. So I was like, yeah, sure. So I'm going to do that, and it's going to be from a photograph of a place on Pecan Island, which is uh, south of where I live. Now, um, with this, this is Strathmore Ready Cut watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton. I just grabbed it since it was a smaller sheet that I could cut in half. I'm then going to lay a 5 by 7 mat over it. The reason I'm doing this is to allow me to do a white border inside this. So either they can uh, frame it at five by seven or get a tinier frame, probably a four by six. I think that's the next size down. And then there's probably like a three by five. And this will give a, a kind of nice little border around it. And putting the mat on top kind of just helps it remain square. You just have to be careful with a little curvature of the paper. And that's what happened there, but it's all good. I'll try to superimpose the picture that I'm painting from on this. Um, if it doesn't let me do that, I'll post it on uh, my Patreon account. You guys can get the picture from there. By the way, a whole bunch of links down below. Um, you know, feel free to check them out and please like and subscribe. Okay, so now that we got that tape down, I'm going to paint in a slightly different fashion. Uh, with this one, there is a person in this scene and they're on a horizon. So I'm gonna put a little bit of masking fluid from the fine liner down. Very rarely do that I use this. It has been showing up in videos a little bit lately and how well it will work on here, I'm not sure. But I'd rather use this than gouache today. So if I can get it to start flowing, it has a little, little piece right there though clean out and it should clear out that tube. Let's put it right there. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pause the camera and put this down and wait for it to dry. I'll be right back. Okay. So painting inside this, whenever you have a taped off edge, um, you're gonna wind up having, unfortunately, uh, some weird buckling that takes place. There's a few ways to mitigate it by either using a heavier paper, like 300 pound paper, or you can um, wet the back of the paper and lay it down on the surface and that'll help it stay spread out. I unfortunately have neither of those. I don't have the heavy paper and I don't have um, a nice surface this would just get too saturated so I'm just taking the squirrel mop brush and just pushing it along horizontally a little dry brush let's get a little bit more up in here and I feel this will be kind of a less is more painting Now for the sand, I'm going to go grab some raw umber. I need to get it to mellow out some, so let's see if I could get it with raw sienna to mellow out. I could probably mix a little bit. I'm left-handed, and this will be in the way some. I'm going to 
past that. Down here. Now, there is a line where the sand is wetter, so let's grab some raw umber. And then I'll grab some burnt umber for the water. More burnt umber in there. Okay. Now, on this, there is some water foam. So let me try to lift a little bit with a paper towel and lift up that recession. All right, I'm gonna grab the number one rigger for a fine point and wet and wet, I'm gonna take a little bit of sap green I always, uh, I'm not a fan of reconstituting sap green. For some reason, it just doesn't work for me. And this is the washed up seaweed and grass. It came up and that recedes back along this line. Okay, going to feed some horizontal lines for a recession texture. They'll be closer together in the back, They'll be farther apart as we get closer. I'll grab some burnt sienna. some sap green. Now on the horizon there's the far distant sap green but I'm gonna push that to the blue grab a little bit of light red oxide and ultramarine for a far distant purple Unfortunately, I didn't bring my masking fluid down far enough, so I'm going to have to make sure I don't paint right underneath him. Or I didn't bring the sand line high enough, so I'm going to have to leave a gap for the feet. Okay, I'll try to get some variation in there. A little bit of burnt sienna, sap green mix. So you have that far distant and then you have something a little bit closer. Right. 
more green. And there we go. Okay, now the paper's still wet. So I have to be careful. I'm gonna do more gestural marks of this seaweed grass recession. Let's grab some ultramarine, try to get this a little bit more water-like right on the edge. Okay. I'm going to do a quick dry off. I want to pause the camera. All right, we're back. I'm gonna lift up the masking fluid right here. I'll just rub it off. Once so we have that spot saved. Let me get a dark. We got gray pants use raw sienna Light red oxide, just try to get like a flesh tone. That arm hanging down. Let's pass this along that horizontal line. Now I'm just trying to get this to look like an actual person. Let me bring some ultramarine in closer. Okay, kind of background, distant blue that I was talking about. Bring that in closer. Okay, bring in a little bit more sap green. I gotta figure out how to make this person pop more. Let me play around with the foreground a little bit while I think about that.
Okay, let me do a dry off, see what I can do here. Let me pause for a second. All right, I'm back. I might take the jelly roll pen and use that over the person. I'm going to put some birds in though first. Let's see how jelly roll. I remember jelly roll working well on this paper. I know I'm not making that person pop like I should. Could bring green on either side. A little green between the legs. All right, since we have the jelly roll out, let's play with the edge of the water here. And I'm about to, to wrap this one up. Might do some more off camera. But uh, like I said, I'll post it online for you guys to try out if you want to follow along. Of course, you're able to follow along with anything that I do. And if you want to sign your name to it, that's totally fine. I would love, and you have my express permission to sell anything that you do from any of the tutorials. Because I want to see you all succeed. And I want to see you all be able to buy art supplies. So on that note, I'll talk to you all soon. And have a great day. Bye.